But we'll sing here, Christ lives in me. We'll do the first, second, and last of this song. Three fourteen. Christ lives in me. Page three fourteen in your songbook. Amen. Once far from God and dead in sin, no light my heart could see. But in God's word, the light I found. Now Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Oh, what a salvation this that Christ lives in me. As rays of light from yonder sun for flower the earth set free. So life and light and love came forth from Christ living in me. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Oh, what a salvation this that Christ lives in me. With longing now my heart is filled that like him I may be. As on the wondrous thought I dwell that Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. Oh, what a salvation this that Christ lives in me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll go ahead and pray at this time. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us, Lord, to be here for our evening service. And dear God, now we pray you bless us tonight. Have a wonderful service. And may you be lifted up and glorified and praised, Lord, to everything today, tonight. And uh, Lord, we thank you for it all. Pour your spirit upon us. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Well, welcome, everybody. So good to see you. We're so glad you are here. Thank God so much for you. We appreciate you. God bless this morning. Had a great time meeting with God's people. What a blessing it is to be with you tonight. We're going to have the choir come up and sing, okay? Amen. And let's sing that. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It will make you love the Bible. It will make you love the Bible. It will make you love the Bible. It's good enough for me. So give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It will make you go so winning. It will make you go so winning. It will make you go so winning. It's good enough for me. So give me that old time. Give me that old time. Give me that old time. It's good enough for me. Amen, amen. Let's pray for the choir. Father, pour your spirit upon the choir. And we pray you bless the listeners, bless the ones watching online. Give a special blessing to them. And thank you so much for the ones that watch and listen, that are watching and the ones that are here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. You can be seated. God bless you. God bless your choir. So many times I question certain circumstances and things I could not understand. And many times in trials, weakness blurs my vision. That's when my frustration gets so out of hand. It's when I am reminded that I've never been forsaken. 
I've never had to stand one test alone. When I look at all my victories, the spirit rises up in me. And it's through the fire, my weakness is made strong. Oh, he never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decisions, and the adversary says, give in, just hold on. My God will show up, yes. He will take you through the fire again. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy, and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decisions, and the adversary says give in, just hold on. My God will show up, yes, and he will take you through the fire again. I know within myself that I will surely perish. Oh, but if I trust in the mighty hand of God, he'll shield the flames again, again. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decisions, and the adversary says give in, just hold on. My God will show up, yes. Take you through the fire again. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hill would not be hard to climb. He never offered our victories without fighting, but he said help would always come in time. Just remember when you're standing in the valley of decisions and the adversary says give in, just hold on. My God will show up, yes, and he will take you through the fire again, just hold on. My God will show up, and he will take you through the fire again. Church, I tell you, let the church say amen. Amen. Let's everybody stand. Amen. Uh, I was told I got my built-in amen, my own amen. Yeah, it's in me. I love it. I love to hear the choir sing. That don't fire you up. I know what's going to fire you up. Amen. Thank you, choir. Wow. God's blessed you, choir. And God's blessed the listeners. But we give, the, we give Jesus all the praise and glory for it. Amen. Brother Bro is right. I thank God for his Bible uh, time and uh, Bible training. My, how that was wonderful. Thank you. Amen. God, it's good. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It's all good. Yes, sir. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. We've got to make sure we stay humble, friend. Amen. Not be built up with pride. And there I am. And God can take that. God, God will deal with this situation. And there I am. Amen. Amen. God help us be humble. And I love what he said about that quiet time in the prayer closet. Now, we're going to have to see more of that. Amen. Now, I know, I thank the Lord, you know, people we want to get things done, but we got to get that, we got to get that prayer time in that prayer closet. Amen. Amen. We got to get that word of God in our mind. Amen. Our. Amen. We're going to be successful and go on to higher planes. Amen. 
Got to guard that time. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. We're going to get ready to worship God in tithes and offerings and worship Him and praise Him and give Him glory. Amen. Amen. Let me hear you say tithes and offerings. Tithes and uh, uh, while you're getting away, uh, while you're getting that ready, I'll give you some announcements. Okay, you can be seated and give you some announcements as you're getting ready for your tithes and offerings and worshiping Him and praising Him and giving Him glory. Isn't that right? Amen. It's good that we purpose in our heart that we, we, we have it for the Lord. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. And while you're getting your tithes and offerings ready, I want to say thank you for being faithful this morning and faithful tonight. And I want to thank, thank you for your prayers. Uh, concerning this upcoming Pastors and Workers Conference. Amen. We'll be leaving out tomorrow morning, getting an early start this week, and um, going to the Reno, uh, Nevada area there, flying in Amen. from Nashville. I want you to pray for safety, okay? Amen. Pray Amen. the Lord will bless us tomorrow morning, you know, and pray for safety while we're on the highway, okay? Amen. And uh, yes, we'll be in that area there. Um, you know, do some vacationing uh, this week, and you praying the Lord will just watch over us, protect us, and have a refreshing, encouraging time. Amen. Amen. There should be some bulletins left back there. You can pass them out to the ones that that didn't get one or need one. Okay. And uh, while while I'm uh, talking about this here, and, um, I believe we have some up here. Um, uh, okay. All right. Need one more. Let me have one more of those bulletins if I, if I can. And uh, thank you. All right. Um, uh, so, yeah, and you look at your bulletin here, and so it's hard to believe time's going by so quickly, but the Pastors Worker Conference will be next week, but of course, um, this week in California, me and my wife, and, and Cheyenne and Elijah, pray for safety, isn't that right? Pray for safety and pray that God would... Um, just be with my wife that she don't get sick on the plane with that vertical. But God's able to give grace. Amen. God's in control of it all. Isn't that right? And pray that she'll be refreshed and pray that uh, um, Elijah and Cheyenne will have a wonderful time as well. Elijah's last year in high school, so um, this year he'll be graduating. So this will be a time, you know, um, have, give them a good time to have. And so um, it works. They work so hard, and you know that, and uh, work so heart and my wife and kids and, and I just thank God for this church and we, we love the church and thank God for you amen, amen. amen. and uh, so um, thank the Lord so much uh, uh, for you appreciate you so much and then um, next week uh, the pastors and workers conference and so while we're out there you know I'll be preaching and I, I want to encourage you we put it in the bulletin the churches that I'm scheduled to preach this Wednesday okay um, this Wednesday, the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Reno, mm -hmm. Nevada there, okay. Um, for example, um, three hours, think, of, think, think, of, think about it Think about it this way. You know, we're uh, nine, nine o'clock our time. Just think about that. It's mm -hmm. six o'clock right. their time. See? You got to think that way. You know, Wednesday evening. So when you leave here, you can know that we're, we're just about beginning so you can go on the Facebook you know live say amen. Amen. amen if you you don't want to watch it later on YouTube it should be on there I would think but you know um, Sunday morning for example see I'll be preaching scheduled at the Central Coast Baptist Church there and um, Pastor Wallace amen. see amen. so after church think about that when you leave We'll just get started. Amen. Amen. So you can watch online. See? Amen. You can watch online on Facebook. Amen. Amen. Wave to me from California. Amen. I wave to you. Amen. <laughs> There's a little joke over here. Amen. But we, can, we pray for each other. Isn't that right? Amen. We pray for each other. Isn't that right? Amen. So Lord willing, you know, God give us safety and everything goes well. I'm trying to, you know... It's a long ways from home, but it helps to know that you're praying. Amen. Amen. I'll be praying for you. Pray for Brother Burley. Pray the Spirit of God come upon him and use him greatly, like he usually does. Amen. Pray for him. Pray that God give him grace. Pray that God give him strength. Amen. 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 Why watch him? 
and Brother Burley will be leaving next Monday morning. Him and Sister Patrice pray for their safety up in the plane. Pray for their safety. Okay? They'll be leaving next Monday, Lord will get there Monday. Okay? And it's going to be a wonderful time for me this year. And this going, when you say, Preacher, why do you go to this conference? I want, number one, I do it for God. I work for God. I serve God. I want to glorify Him. I, I show my presence. They say, how's that glorify God? I encourage Him. And I get a blessing. Amen. Amen. God speaks to me. Amen. Motivates me. Amen. Do more for Him. Amen. Amen. The XDs that work and got businesses, they study places, study things, and God gives them new ideas, and God gives them things. Amen. Amen. And sometimes their, their jobs to send them. Make the business stronger, greater. Amen. Amen. Go on the higher planes. Amen. 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 Say why? Amen. To give God, get God more glory. Amen. 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 Courage and the courage soul winners, courage bus workers, Amen. courage those from the old, fa uh, the old fashioned fundamental. Go back to the Bible way. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And they're right. Amen. So encourage Brother Burley, the trees. God bless the big. They don't, they don't understand it, but uh, someone don't understand. It. I understand the sacrifices, the trees. Amen. You're gonna get a blessing. Don't Amen. get me wrong. It's, it's worth it all. Amen. It's worth it all. Amen. 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 Every bit of it. Amen. Yes. I mean that. And God is going to bless in a wonderful way. You hear me? But it's a sacrifice. And we do it for the Lord. All right? And, um, and so, and then that Wednesday, while we're gone, pray for Brother Tim. He'll be preaching. Amen. Pray the Spirit of God come upon Brother Tim. Amen. That's a heavy responsibility Amen. to leave him in charge. And say, you're in charge. If the plane goes down, and me and Brother Burley goes down, then you got to keep going on. <laughs> we don't plan it going down, brother. It's brother Tim. We plan. <laughs> brother Tim, we plan to be here now. Okay. <laughs> we can. <live. laughs> God, <laughs> since Reese, courage them all. Okay, brother Tim. You got you got people here to help you, brother Tim. Amen. Amen. You got you got you got servants of the Lord here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God bless brother Tim. Uh, you say you say has God called brother Tim to preach. He's a volunteer. It's like Isaiah. Um, God said, here, I'm looking for somebody. He said, here am I. Send me. Amen. Brother Tim said, send me. I'll go. Amen. He's a volunteer for Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's a volunteer. But uh, on the serious side, we, we heard Brother Tim preach. And my, he blessed our souls. He blessed our hearts with that word of God. And, and we just thank God so much for it. And he knows what his dad was trying to say while he's preaching during Bible training. You know, you, know, you know what your dad was saying. You know what our sister pastor was saying. You spend time alone with God Amen. because he knows there's a real devil. Amen. Amen. And he knows there's demons. Amen. Amen. And he knows when you do stuff for God, Satan's coming out. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to scare you, but you got, uh, I'm just trying to motivate you. Amen. Amen. You know, to run to that prayer closet. Amen. Amen. Spend time in prayer. Amen. Spend time in the word. Everything will be fine. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. 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 And so... Um, um, it, it, it's, 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 it's just so important that you pray for these next um, couple of weeks, some busy weeks for us. You know, pray for the safety. Um, pray that the Lord would speak to hearts. Amen. 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 And um, I want you to be praying. It was, uh, there's, you know, something can happen here. You don't have to go somewhere for it to happen far away, but anything can happen. This um, situation in uh, Ukraine and and the war, and really, these things you need to really take serious, that God would be merciful to us. And uh, I'm not trying to scare us, but, you know, there's, there's threats of nuclear. And I don't think people can comprehend what could happen. And God knows we don't want it to happen anyway, especially when we're out in California. I'm trying to try to scare you, but <laughs> make us pray more. <laughs> we want to be stuck. We don't want to be stuck out in California. If there's something crazy that happens, but I don't, I, I believe we got enough God's people praying. We've got pastors that will be there in the conference, okay, traveling around the country and workers. We got a lot of people praying. Amen. God's greater than old Putin. Amen. God can zap them down Amen. before Amen. He even think about throwing nuclear on here. Amen. 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 And cyber attacks and all that. And concerned about you know freezing our money and all that. God's greater than all that, friend. Well, Satan, he's just trying to cause us to live in fear. That's what he's doing. If the pandemic don't work, he wants to try something else. Isn't that right? But, you, you know, God, 
God's with us. But I want you to pray. Amen. And um, uh, my daughter Minga and Liz and Candace and Becky, pray for them. They're way in Brazil somewhere. That's way far away. Pray for their safety. Pray God's grace and mercy be upon them. You know, as they're um, taking a vacation, you know. And um, pray for their safety, you see. You got to pray about these matters. Isn't that right? Amen. People are traveling. We got uh, people out of town. We got loved ones out of town. We need to pray for them. Pray to God to watch over them and protect them. Amen. Protect them. Amen. Pray for loved ones. Amen. Amen. Pray for God's grace. Isn't that right? Amen. Pray for God's mercy. And I thank you um, for all that you do and you pray. And I appreciate you so much. She put it here in the bulletin. Um, the rare um, Bible conference there. Um, did we make some um, copies? That's okay. You can make them. You, 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 yeah, you, that's, that's fine. You could, um, you can, hey, before we leave anyway, you don't got to do it now, but before we leave, yeah, just make sure we, we get some copies in our hand. Um, rare Bible conference, save the date. Amen. Amen. Save the date. Isn't that right? Amen. Reaching all of the human race Amen. everywhere. Amen. Not reaching all races because there's only one race. Amen. Amen. We got to get out of that Amen. talk. You know, all right? Amen. I think KKK likes all the, that talk. The Black Panthers and those guys. Amen. <laughs> Farrakhan, Lewis. <laughs> We're God's people. Amen. Amen. Red, yellow, black, and white. Amen. Amen. One race from Adam. Amen. Amen. God created that race. Amen. Adam and Eve. Amen. Not Adam and Steve. Amen. Say, preacher, you ain't been preaching yet. You're meddling already. <laughs> now nah, I'm just messing with you. But you're all on this area side, one. Isn't that right? Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And, and we just thank the Lord. We'll be praying to the Lord to bless the, uh, the upcoming conference, um, June 12th through 17th. Yes, 12th through 17th. We'll be praying now. Amen. We don't want to wait to the last minute. Start giving to it now. Mm -hmm. So much we can give to, right? As we prepare the offering. Isn't it right? We got the general fund. Thank God you got uh, pastor's travel that you're helping with. Thank God so much for every one of you. Um, Nehemiah Project. So much going on. Amen. Amen. It's good. He that sowed sparingly will reap sparingly. He that sowed bountifully will reap bountifully. Amen. Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaking, oh, shaking together, running over. Amen. Amen. The more you give, the, the more God can do for us. Yeah, that's right. The more we give. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Learn to rejoice when God blesses people. Amen. 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 Learn to rejoice. Praise God. Amen. And uh, God will give to you when you watch people be blessed. Amen. 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 And I thank the Lord. And I look around this room, and I see God's blessed you. I remember God's giving you time to go on vacation and have a wonderful time. I remember. Yes, Amen. Amen. Your time will come again. Amen. We just all can't take a vacation all at once. <laughs> We're in bad shape. I don't want, it's bittersweet. I told you it's bittersweet when you go on vacation. It's sweet. I'm glad you're having a good time, but it's bitter. I miss you. Amen. 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 I don't like it when you're gone. And I don't like when I leave. It's bittersweet. Amen. I hope you don't say he's gone. I'm glad he's gone. Don't come back no more. Amen. <laughs> I know you're not that way. I just, you know, I don't like leaving this pulpit. I don't like going far away. I really don't. But I, wanted, I want you to know one thing. I do it for God. Amen. And that's the main reason I do this. Amen. 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 And so, um, I just thank the Lord so much. Um, that God does work things out for us. That he does encourage our hearts. And once we get there, he does strengthen us and give us grace. And it gives us joy and, and makes a blessing out of it. Amen. 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 Let's stand, please. Well, all right. All right. Would you be praying for Pastor Treber and Amen. praying for North Valley Baptist Church? A lot of work's put into it. You can watch it online, you know. You can watch the conference, to, you know, and um, positive things when you go to bed. 
by the time some of you lay down, your head on the pillow, you can, you can be watching. <laughs> you can be watching it, you know. And uh, by the time you get home in the evening, you can watch it and uh, the conference. And and I hope you do. You know, there's people from all around the world to be watching it. And probably a hundred countries will be watching it, the conference. You know, and um, and so. Uh, uh, I just thank the Lord for you precious people that will be praying. And, and I will encourage Pastor Trevor, encourage the yes. workers in this church. I get to talk with them get out, get out, get out, and meet with them. And, and it's amazing you, you meet different people. And I've met preacher friends there. And I've met preachers that encourage me. And I, like I told you, I'll be preaching out there mm -hmm. and met these preachers. And, yes, and they really thrive and push different nationalities of people reaching all different nationalities of people and not just a, not just um, you know uh, just glorifying a you know a black church or a white church if there's different people of different color and different ethnic groups and you know around they're striving to reach them and that wonderful yeah. and they want them in their church and they're, and they're doing what they can and they're right many of them and they're right like I said, anywhere you go, you're going to have something out there. You can't get away from it. It's everywhere you go. Where are you going to go? You see, we got to be the light shining. Isn't that right? Amen. And um, we got to realize that um, there's a lot of good God's loving people that love God, that serve God, that don't have problems like that. You see what I'm saying? Amen. I know these churches I'm going to out there in California, they ain't got no problem. To, to, to them, it's just crazy. To them, they're like, it seems like they're in their own little world out there in California, really. Really, I'm seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, he's right. Where's the racism at? Amen. Right, right. You know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, um, and we love them. But they just don't. They've got different nationalities of people. Right. Just a normal thing. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Normal thing. Amen. Think Amen. it's crazy. Amen. You say? Amen. And then, and of course... When I share with them different things, they learn to pray for the country and realize how bad shape we are in and, um, and the great need. Amen? And, um, and so I thank the Lord. That's what you want. You want to see revival in our country. Amen. I appreciate that so much. All right, Brother Bruce, going to come and pray over the offering at this time. And, and um, I want you to pray with them. I appreciate it so much. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask the Lord um, blessings on the offering at this time and ask the Lord to provide every need for us. Amen. And uh, definitely be praying. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, again. We can give, Lord, and we do pray that you bless the offering tonight, Lord. And God, you know all the needs we have. I pray you provide every need, Lord, and bless us in a special way, dear Jesus. And uh, help us, dear Lord. And Father, give pastor them a wonderful trip and give them safety and grace, Lord. And may your angels, dear Jesus, just watch over them, Lord. And and may, dear God, we be lifting them up, Lord, this week. May this be a week that we lifting them up um, every day, begging God and praying, dear Jesus, that God protect them and bless them and use them uh, in these churches that he be preaching in, dear God, in Reno and, Lord, in California. May we just be praying every day that we lift the man of God up and that God will use him in a special way. And, uh, dear God, and give him a wonderful, refreshing time, too, as well. So help us, Lord, to do, do our part, Lord, here in Knoxville. Be begging God, praying, and uh, we'll thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Appreciate that so much. Thank you. God bless you. Appreciate you. All right. Wonderful. All right. We're going to um, 
I have Sister Patrice Burley to sing a solo this time. We pray for her, Sister Patrice Burley, the Spirit of God will help her. And uh, pray that God will help you to listen. And as people worship and praise God at tithes and offerings, remember you can go to the website, Grace Bob Evans Church. You can give on the website there, right there on the website. And you can text give or whatever way you're going to do it on the website, you know. And, um, or if you can, you can go by and swipe your card there. Uh, Brother Tim be there to help you if, you if you need his help in a few moments. Let's pray, shall we? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God for help. Ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Father, thank you. I pray that you help us. Bless each one. Bless the trees as she ministers in the soul. In Jesus' name. Bless our listeners as they're listening and watching. Worshiping God as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, God bless you, Sister Therese Berlin. As I walk through the door, I sense his presence, and I know this was the place where love abound, for this is the temple, Jehovah God. On holy ground, we are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let on holy ground in his presence there is joy beyond all measures and at his feet peace of mind can still be On holy ground, we are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us pray. On holy ground, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, we are standing in His presence, we are standing in His presence, Amen. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. Amen. Let the church say amen. Church say amen. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, we've got a gift here. Mark's birthday. Mark's birthday. Okay. All right. We're going to sing happy birthday to Mark, but I got orders from headquarters. Uh, Sister Barnett said that um, this gift must go to Patrice because she put Mark into the world. 
a little humor there. A little humor. So <laughs> she said, you must give that to Sister Patrice. Mark, we're going to sing happy birthday, but mama put you in the world. Happy birthday to you. Sing it. Happy birthday to you. Sing it now. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Now, Mark, you're going to have to take that up with Sister Barnett, but I got orders from headquarters. Okay, buddy? Uh, she just, she's messing, but she gave Sister Patrice son. She, all right, he, Mark got it. Let's, let's give Mark a hand. God bless you, Mark. He got a gift back there. All right, Sister Patrice. Sister Barnett said so you put him in the world. So, Sister Barnett, she's a mess. There is, she, she's, uh, God's given us a Jew as, as, as my wife. That, I, 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 I can't even imagine life without my wife. Uh, you don't know how excited I am. She's coming to California with me at the Pastors Workers Conference. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? And I know Brother Burr is filled with joy. He got Patrice right by his side at the conference. And, and, uh, and then, of course, I got Cheyenne and Elijah. To be honest with you, sometimes it gets lonely at the airport. It gets lonely at the conference. And there's, well, I have a great time. I, a lot of friends, a lot of people... Uh, but there's nothing like you having your your spouse or one of your loved ones or people from your church and and there's a blessing to have brother Burley, my sister pastor and and his wife and have the fa just have some of my family there. It's just a blessing, you know. And I thank the Lord. And I praise God for it. Would you open up the Word of God, if you will, in the Book of Ruth? In the Book of Ruth, please. Would you open up your Bible here? to the book of Ruth. For the sake of time, we're just going to get right, in, right, right into it, okay? I have to meet with some of our workers, you know, um, tonight and get some things done, okay? And so we're going to get right into it from here. Um, would you turn to Judges, I mean, turn to Ruth, I'm sorry. Turn to Ruth chapter 4. We'll read, we'll read these verses here, verses Ruth chapter 4, and look at verse, verse 9, and read, read on with me, and, and keep up with me, and as I read, and you're looking there in verse 9, and when you get, okay, and Boaz said unto the elders, and unto all the people, ye are witness this day, that I have bought all that was Elimelech's and all that was Chilion's and Malon's of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife. Verse 10. To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren and from the gate of his place. Ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that has come into thine house like Rachel, like Leah, which too did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthy, worthily in Ephrathah, and be famous in Bethlehem. Keep up with me in verse 12. Verse, verse 12 of, of Ruth chapter 4 verse 12. And let thy house be like the house of Pharaoh's whom Tamar bear unto Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. This young woman. So Boaz took Ruth. And she was his wife. Do you have the handouts there? I told you to uh, make sure we, we have a, um, enough there. Um, did, did, you get, did, you got, did you get them? Did you pass them out yet? Go ahead and pass them out. Make sure. Make sure yeah. Go, go. You, you made them? Yeah. Just pa pass them out there. I uh, made extra copies. I want everyone to have one of those handouts. We don't know exactly what Ruth, um, what exactly that she, um, what exactly that she, she looked like, you know. We, we do know that she was darker skin complexion, the, the Moab people there. Uh, it's amazing when I was preaching this. I thank God, Brother Randy, he joined our church. He's such an encourager. 
He's such encouragement. He's such encouragement, Brother Randy, and the white brother there. And he was so encouraging and shared with me um, the, the parts of the world there about Ruth and how, no doubt about it, she was a black, you know, dark skin, no doubt, colored. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's just wonderful how God brings people in our church, you know, and what encouragement he is. Amen. And he understands. Um, yeah, let me, have, let me have one of those pictures there. And, um, and, and uh, let me get one of those pictures. We don't know exactly what, what roof, how she looked, you know. And um, I, I wanted to just run these copies off, you know, all through my life. Um, all through my life, all the years of my life, even, even up until now, for some reason, um, when you got pictures in the Bible or pictures of Bible stories, uh, they're all white. There's nobody dark skin. Um, hardly anybody dark skin or, or diff, uh, brown. And, um, you know, I, I, we don't believe in that critical race theory that everybody's a racist and racism in everybody. No, we don't believe that. But we, we do believe that through history and even in our day and time, there is some problems in certain areas of our country that's causing a lot of confusion. And the, and the Democratics, some of, most of them, many of them, um, you know, I'm sorry, that's the platform. It's not, they're, not, they're not apologizing about it. They're pushing socialism and communism. They're, they're pushing. They're, they're just right out telling you. Many of them, I mean, are against capitalism. I'm serious. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's a mess. And they're, they're not, without apology, they're telling you they're, they're for abortion, killing babies. Hello? And using, are you listening? And using the, um, you know, the um, black African American people playing on the feelings that what has happened in the past to make them feel, to make us feel that we're all a bunch of victims. And we're crippled. And, you know, we're, we're mistreated all the time. And everybody owes us everything. And, um, and we're sorry about what happened in history. Okay, we're sorry about that. But everybody's not like that. And the ones that are like that, and there are some people, deal, they got some serious issues. And pastors and churches, some of them still got some serious issues. And February has been Black History Month. You know, you better thank God for conservative news, Fox News. Amen. You better thank God. If, if, if you've been watching what's happening to Ukraine, if you've been watching what's happening to Russia, there's a lot of propaganda, junk and garbage and fake news that's tearing people down. Good people. And that's how they took our former president, Trump, and tore him down by propaganda, by fake news. And some of that fake news has messed your mind up, some of you. And I love you. But you better thank God for conservative Fox News. And they've been pushing Feb in February. They've been pushing black history. They've been pushing, remember the uh, black history. Remember, what, 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 uh, I want you to pay attention. I want no fooling around. I just want you to get everything that God has for you. And I want you to realize that that conservative news is saying, remember some things about the black history. And, and, and if Fox News can do it, independent fundamental Baptist white preachers and black preachers can take time out and remember what black history things. The reach the black populace to let them know. Listen, the, the, if you knew the lies that they told black people to get Trump out of office about he's a racist and, and, uh, and, and try to blame him for all these different things. And, 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 our, and our former president, he's, he, I, I've watched them help black people. I've watched them bring them black business people in, uh, in, up there in the, in the White House up there. i watched them brag on black people and help them with their businesses and help them with And he remembered black history. Amen. 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 Black people, some black preachers, scared of your preacher. Because I'm sharing these things. White preachers too. Sad. They don't understand that it could make us it could greater as a country. If we could get some more black people involved in this fundamental Baptist movement, 
And me and Brother Billy went up there to the uh, Crown Conference and Temple Baptist Camp. We love those people. We, we go up there. But we couldn't find one solid black family in the conference beside what we had up there. With all the college students. No, I don't, we don't believe that pastor sex is a racist. No, we don't believe that church is a racist. But there's some black people that are as prejudiced as white people, and, and, and they won't show up. We'll go on that conference. And you'll see next week, we're going to California by the grace and mercy of God. By the grace and mercy of God, we're going. Different nationalities of people. I believe we have about 70 different nationalities of people there, there at, 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 uh, in that church or more. And, uh, and striving to reach the world and doing great things, doing great things. Amen. Doing marvelous things. And he's striving to reach different nationalities of people. We'll meet different preachers. But you mark her down, there'll be a number of black preachers that won't even show up. They won't even show up. Black families, whole families, some only teenagers. Hey, are you listening? And it's not because Pastor Treber's a racist either. And I thank God he's trying to do something about it. At least now, and when I share with these things with him, and I love him, and we talk. He's got a black man on his platform right now. Amen. It, it takes work. And we're striving to get a white one on our platform. Not because I'm a racist, we don't have one. Hello. We got to get one that can humble himself and get off that stick in pride and work for a black one. Sir, oh, they'll go to Africa somewhere, but they won't come. Sir, want to come serve right here? They'll go to some black uh, populace of Africa overseas. But what about the black jungles of America? All oh, this killing going on. Amen. God bless you, Lieutenant. Good to see you coming in. We love you. I was thinking about you today. Amen. God brought you in. We're praying for you. Let me tell you something, friend. God Almighty wants us to get a burden for this country. And we're just about through if we don't get a revival. Black History Month, we've been talking about it. And I try to emphasize on some things. We started off with a black man that helped Jeremiah. You know, listen to that sermon. Share it. Then we went to the black man that helped Jesus carry that cross. Honor to carry that cross. Honor to work for Jesus. Amen. And we talk about the black woman that helped Moses, the great servant of God, was the one of the meekest men on the face of this earth. Amen. Servant of God. Helped them. He married the Ethiopian woman. And today, with delight, it's hard to believe this month is just about over. This black woman that married a mighty Jewish prince. A wealthy man. How about that? Somebody say amen. A wealthy man. Isn't that right? In Romans, and uh, in, in Ruth in chapter 4, and how God blessed her in verse 13. And look at the Bible. Look at the word of God. Don't let the devil mess with your mind. Please. In chapter 4, Ruth, in verse 12, and let thy house be like the house of Pharaoh's whom Tamar bear unto Judah the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young, this young woman. Look at verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception. She had a baby. Isn't that wonderful? And she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman. That his name be famous in where? In Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nurse of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee 
which is better to thee than seven sons, have borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the woman, her neighbors gave it a name saying, there is a son born of Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse. The father of David. Now these are the generations of Pharaoh. Pharaoh begot Hezron. Hezron begot Ram. And Ram begot Eminem. And Eminem begot Nation. Nation begot Solomon. And Solomon begot Boaz. And, and Boaz begot Obed. And Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David. And by the way, in Matthew chapter 1, when you read that genealogy, it goes right to the birth of Christ. And is a black colored woman. Hey, college professor, if black people are cursed, hey, preacher, if black people are inferior, why would God bless this woman? Let the church say amen. Now, we don't know exactly how Ruth looked. I just went ahead and, and had this copy made to just get, you picture in your mind what she looked like. We do know from that part of the world in Moab and you go in chapter 1 and look at here, if you will, in Ruth in chapter 1. Go to chapter 1. And verse 1, please. Now it came to pass in the days when the judge uh, when the judge ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of where? Of Moab. Of Moab. Of Moab. Uh, he and his wife and his two sons he got out of the will of God went to the heathen country, went to the stinking world, and God said, don't you marry them, heathens. Don't you marry them. Don't you yoke up with them. Not because of their color, but because they were stinking pagans, and they believe in that stinking idolatry junk. And you're right, sister pastor in Bible training, put your stinking idols away. If you got idols, worship only Jesus. And God got mad in Isaiah. Somebody say amen. Listen to me. Are you paying attention to me? Never did he say you can't marry him because of the color of his skin. How stupid that is. I want these black girls to have good things also. Just like any white girl. Just like any Spanish girl. I want Spanish girl to have anything a white woman can have, a black woman can have. I just believe, brother, God's people ought to be blessed. And James said, don't have respect to other persons. Don't be that way. Don't be built up with pride like you're better than somebody. Like you're, oh, you're prettier. Oh, your color's better. Oh, foolish talk. Foolishness. Our Luther King had to keep telling his kids, Daddy, they, they said, why can't we go on the Ferris wheel? Why can't we go in that restaurant? Daddy, we just want a hamburger like them. Daddy. And made, made a, maybe had made some statements like, why do I have to have, be black? Why do I have to have a color? Why can't I be white and just be able to go in that amusement park? He had explained that to his children. Do you know? That he would say, and his mother would say, you're just as good as them. God loves you. Just like he loves them, he loves you too. But he had explained to them because there's hatred, because there's pride, and you got to learn to love your enemies, and you got to learn to pray for those. He yeah, explained to them, you're just as good as the person that got that job. You're just as good as the person that has that lovely house. You're just as good. Nobody's better than anybody. And he was teach his children not to have that hatred. That you're somebody special. And God made you that color. You heard me say, if God made you white, praise God. God made you black. God made you brown. God made you yellow. Whatever color you are, mix. God designed you. Yeah. Psalms 139, he designed everything about you. Yeah. He Every secret part. Amen. You're God's great creation. Yeah. Don't you ever think your color can stop you. Don't you ever think the devil could stop you because of what ethnic group you are. 
He blessed Ruth, didn't he? But if you're gonna, if you if you're gonna, if you're gonna be blessed, you're gonna have to make good choices like she made, isn't that right? You gotta make good choices, isn't that right? The choices that she made helped her to be blessed. Look at chapter one, please. Look at chapter one. Look at chapter one, if you will, in verse fourteen. And they lifted up their voice and what? And wept again. And or for what? Kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth what? <clears throat> See? She clave unto her. Underline that, please. She clave. Now, regardless what color you are, you got to learn to cleave to the right company. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 15. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God, where thou diest, will I die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me. And more also, if aught death part thee and me. Listen to me. If you're, if you're Guatemalan, if you're uh, Portuguese, if you're black African American and, and Portuguese, if you're full of African Amer uh, African, and your ancestors go back to Africa. Listen, and listen. I don't. It don't matter what color you are. You can be, get the blessings. You can. You can. God can bless you with a prince. God can bless you with a princess. You young lady, listen to me. You can be blessed, young lady. Listen to me. Uh, you, Young girl, listen to me, teenager. Dream of God's blessings on you. Nobody can hold you back. God can bless you, but you got to make decisions to hang around God's people, to cleave to God's people. Don't you go back. Don't you? You can't follow. Listen, you. If your sister's going down the wrong path, if your brother's going around the wrong path, you got to love. Okay, love your loved ones, but follow those that follow Jesus. Follow those that follow God. Why do you think we get up and say, stop trying to look like the world, talk like the world, act like the world? We want God's blessings on you. I mean it. We got too many that's going back. No more working on bus routes. Going back. No more soul winning. Going back. Go on to the wicked Moab music of the world. Go on back. The girls getting back into their britches and back in their pants. And back in their mini skirts and back in their short shorts. Turning back to the old ways. To the old churches. You got independent fundamental Baptist churches used to be straight down the line. They used to be straight. And now they're going back to the old music and going back to the old ways and going back to the beach half naked and no standards. Going back to not tithing and giving. No, sir. No, sir. You want to marry a prince? You want to marry a princess? You want to marry a queen? You want to marry a godly woman? A godly... Somebody help me out. And by the way, young man, old Boaz was an older man, but bless God, that old man had something in him. And that old man knew how to find him a good wife. He knew how to find a pretty wife. He knew how to find a pretty girl. And he found one that loves God. Somebody say amen. And she found the prince. Quit settling for the crumbs of this world. We need more black girls to have the best. And white girls and Spanish girls. I told you, Pastor Barnett, it's stirred up. I've been stirred up through these years. And you know I have, and I've stirred you up. And I'm reaching all races everywhere. Conference is making a difference, brother. It's making a difference because I want black people to have the best too. I want them to have a church like us. My sister, Pastor, we go down to the conference in California. He'll see others and he'll encourage others and I'll encourage others. And we'll share with them white preachers and black preachers. We want some more black preachers to get some of this. We want some more these black preachers to come and get some. We want them. We want them to go back. We want some white preachers to go in the black community. We want bus routes. We want soul winning. We want missions. We want them to have the best marriages too. We want them to have the best marriages too. Tired of sending your black student to your college white preacher and say, go find a black girl, black boy. Go find a black girl, black boy. Well, God may want them to have a white one. Uh-oh, here goes troublemaker Pastor Barnett. Troublemaker. Trouble. 
Here he comes. He comes to rock the boat. He comes to rock the boat. Those with KKK views, those with sticking white supremacist group, uh, views, those uh, with uh, uh, socialists and communists that's trying to destroy our country. And you better get right with God before the devil destroys this thing. We better get some black people right with God. We better get some on the staff. We better get them out soul winning. We better get them out teaching. We better get them out on the mission field. Hey, white preachers, how many black missionaries you know? How many independent fundamental black missionaries you know? How many colored missionaries you know? Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of it? Aren't you tired of it? First of all, we need to get more black students to stay in Bible college. We need to get, it, get, get them strong enough to quit being a stinking whip. You got a lot easier than I had it going to Bible college. At least you can get away with dating a white girl most of the time. <laughs> they, they try that stinking stuff today. Try it. Try it now. Try it now. You're branded a stinking uh, communist and soldier. <laughs> you try that. You try that stuff now. You be labeled a KKK. -er. You be a, you be you be labeled a shepherd. Go ahead, black person. Go ahead, keep up with that sticking crazy views. The blacks ought to date blacks and marry blacks. Keep it up. Keep it up. They'll put you right with Jesse Jackson. They'll put you right with Sharpton. They'll put you right with Louis Farrakhan. Come on, put, come on, preach that stuff. Preach that stuff. And doubles the ACP that be on your back door. You might do that stuff undercover, but I'll tell you what, we're, we're gonna call, you're going to cause some problems. You ain't going to get away with that stuff without, you say, preacher, who are you? A black activist? Who are you? <laughs> freedom marcher? Yeah, I'm a freedom marcher for Jesus. Hey, I'm for God's rights, man. Uh, preacher, I'm scared to identify you as my pastor. Why? What are you scared of? Thank God you got a pastor to get up and stand and tell the truth. Stick his neck out for you. You're going to be embarrassed about your pastor. They, they ain't even worth being friends to. They act like that. Craziness. Buddy, when you stand up for right, I'm not going to try to be embarrassed of you. Say, I got to get away from you. The troublemaker. <laughs> That's right. Martin Luther King went through it. He went through it. <laughs> Bombed this house. He went through it. I ain't got no rocks thrown at my head. He went through it. Yeah. You, you, I ain't got no bullet in my head by the grace of God. You think he was popular? I ain't spent no time in jail like he did. Hey. You be strong. Stop being scared. Well, I might be the only black one. I might be the only black one. You ain't the only one that went through it. You ain't gonna be the last one. You ain't the be Hey! Independent, fundamental, soul winning, the best. Amen. Standards, the best. Amen. I took my sister pastor to the independent, fundamental, Baptist movement. Amen. Pioneer work in the black community. Amen. Amen. Foreign to many of them. I heard some of the best teaching, the best preaching on soul winning and standards. Old King James Bible. Amen. Sermons that will help the young people live clean, holy lives, separated lives. Hey. God knows it's worth it. When I look at the young people that are serving God. 
You're going to go in North Valley, uh, you're going to see some of the sharpest young people you ever see in your life. We got them here. We got some here. God's raising up. But you're worth it. It's worth it. I, I don't give a flip. They're complaining. It, it, could, it, could, it, it could knock this house down. I'm going to preach hard. I'm going to preach against sin. I want to, hey! No, no, no. I've seen blacks uh, get the crumbs. I'm not believing. I, hey, I'm not into the critical race theory, but I know history. I know the black preacher running north, white preacher. I know history. I, but I'm not going to use it like the Black Lives Matter use it. I know, I know, I know. There was a time when they couldn't eat and drink and together, blacks and whites. I know they couldn't ride the bus up in the front. I know that they couldn't get the jobs and they couldn't be politicians and they couldn't vote. I know, I know what the white police did to black people and killed them and got away with it. But every white police is not bad. Every white judge is not bad. I know. I told you. My own president of my Bible college, the church he pastored, blacks could not be baptized. Blacks could not be members. But all the white preachers were not that way. All the white pastors are not that way. And all those that you see in North Valley at the, at the pastors and works conference, the, the, listen, they're not all that way. I say most of them are not that way. And I wonder if there be any there that way. I don't think there's anybody like that there. I just give them the benefits of the doubt. I don't think there's any of them that would, would just say blacks cannot be their members today. And they cannot join blacks. Not this crowd. But just like any crowd, you can always get some pride for one. You always can get some stinking dirty heart one. You can always get somebody messed up in theology. That's anywhere. I don't go looking for them. And let's be careful not to be prejudiced, prejudge. So I, don't know, I, like what, I like the way that white person looked at me. That must be a KKK. <laughs> now if that so-called famous white preacher acted the way he acted back here in, in, in his room back here, and the things he said out of his mouth revealed to, revealed to me, it revealed to you, he's got a heart problem. Now, God will deal with that. That's not prejudging. That's after looking righteously, judging righteously. When you judge righteously. Being observant. That's called fruit inspecting. Amen. We need more like Ruth. God help us to have more like those that will make commitments. I, um, I, am, I, am, I am so I am so burdened for these young people. I, I love you. If there's ever a time you need God's protection. In chapter 2, in chapter 2, in verse 9, let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap and go thou after them. Underline this, please. Have I not charged the young man, the young man, that they shall not touch thee? And without a thirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Would you underline that, please? Have not ch charged Boaz, the man of power. God used them. God used this man. Divine appointment of protection. That young man will not fornicate you. That young man will not adulterate. She was a pretty girl. She was a beautiful young. She was a beautiful black girl. And I'm tired of these beautiful black girls. Some stinking punk. There's some stinking young man. And some are putting their hands all over her. And raping her. And sleeping with her. Whether it's consensual sex. Or it's forced sex. Keep your pot cotton pink and stinking hands off these girls. Keep your hands off their body parts. That's not your wife. That's not somebody help me out. That pornography will ruin you. I said that pornography will ruin you. You wanted to be able to enjoy your own wife. Get your mind off the garbage. How dare you dwell on that halftime of 
the Super Bowl of stinking junk straight out of hell. These girls and boys like jungle animals. How dare you dwell and look upon it? How dare you buy their CDs and buy their, um, download their music? How double dog dare you? So tired of hearing these black girls getting knocked up pregnant one by one. I'm getting so tired of them getting slapped around. I'm getting tired of them going to divorce court in the black community. I'm tired of it for the whites too and the Spanish too. I'm tired of any race. But I mention blacks because the crime is so high. Where's your daughter at? She in your home? She should be right by your side. And you're right next to you. Mama! She lives in your house, so be in the church. You all know what the filthy hands of punks out there. Crazy world. Saddest stories I've ever heard in my life. And there's so many like this. It's sad. That filthy, wicked daddy took the girl and made a dungeon in his own home for. 19, 20 years or whatever. Maybe four or five kids. Treat her like an animal. God revealed it all. And it caught up to him. But the tears and the hurt of a father to do that to a daughter, rape her and Make her a sex slave and function in the home while still living with the wife. These things, these documentations are real. They've happened. There's demons, there's a devil, there's rapists. There's queers. You girls have no idea what you're doing wearing your mini skirts showing your legs and thighs. You have no idea what you're doing when you wear your tight clothes. You have no idea when you're exposing your body. Perverts. And some of them love it, walk around with their high heels and show their legs. They're in a different world. They don't understand the devil. If that daddy would do that to his own daughter and rape her and kill her, what do you think of? Punk on the street will do. What do you think these rappers will do to you? Why would they choose a thug over a prince? She chose a prince. Choose a prince. Choose somebody like Boaz that love God. Choose somebody like Boaz that has something. Have some. These girls, they're chasing after these guys. They got a pot to pee in and a window to throw it out. They got nothing. You said they got looks. <laughs> Them looks know how to change. You say, hey, they got a physique. They got a body. Yeah, you wait, you, you wait to that six pack. <laughs> Turn it into a stinking 60 pack. I'm not talking about a muscle, I'm talking about a fat. Somebody say amen there. You better have more than just, you better have more than just a body. So I like them tattoos. You wait till that body start fading away and them old tattoos turn into a cuss word. Flabbing all over the body. You can't even see the look. Amen. Tell the truth. You better have something in you. You better have a man that will love you, not lust you. Amen. You got that physique. You, you, you wait till you get old like me. Huh. Huh. You better have something in you, son. Huh. Walking around looking at your wife. You ain't so hot yourself. <laughs> you better thank God she don't call you a ball, ball-headed, pot-bellied boy. <laughs> you better... <laughs> Who do you think you are looking for, son? You better thank God she loves you for, for who you are. 
Get all wrinkled up. Get all gray-headed up. <laughs> Hello. Huh. I got, I'm glad my wife loves me for who I am. I'm getting old, man. <laughs> it's hard to keep a six-pack when you're 60. <laughs> six-pack of bustle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of work. <laughs> Metabolism slows down. <laughs> Start vacationing. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Somebody say it better. Be careful. You know, on the truth of the matter is, you ought to love your wife for who she is. You ought to love your husband for who they are. Not for what their body looks like. Amen. You know what you do? This is, this is what you do. You, you pray that God will help these girls. To listen. And you pray that God help these boys to listen. Ask God to get a hold of their heart. And may they realize that we love them. Are you looking at me in the sound room? I get very scared when I can't see a head. I get very worried when I can't see your head. Hey, man, we're going to get a schedule in that sound room. We're going to start swapping these guys, moving these guys around. We love you. We're going to move you around, man. Get comfortable. We're going to move you guys around. Hey, Amen. going to move you around. Happy birthday. But the older you get, the more temptation the devil comes at you. You're fighting. You're fighting. Don't you ever forget this message. God has a princess for you. Don't blow it. God has a princess for you. Don't blow it. Hey, girls, don't blow it. Because you know, you know what ought to scare you? God will give you somebody just like you playing around. He'll give you somebody just like you playing around. Playing around, flirting around with the world. You go ahead and be that way. You know I'm trying to help you. You know I love them. I'm trying to get you to uh, just avoid the hurt. Your kids got to have split custody. Who, who are they going to spend time with? You got to look at the stinking whore right in front of you. When your kids start doing stuff, you got to, the stick and hole among them. And the punk they bring. I love them. I'm not kicking anybody down. Brother, you don't pass the 37 years without you start seeing this stuff happen. The rapes. The slapping around. The divorce. Look at me. Look at me. It's only by the grace of God they ain't commit suicide. Your brothers. Your sisters. Your nephews, my nieces, my, my, mine and yours. People we love. People we love. What, what, look, to much is given, much is required. What's your future going to be like? I, I mean it. God give us tears. We, we need tears. I talk about, I got loved ones. You got loved ones. God, give us tears. You know, I'm so glad we're going to this conference. I'm going to get kicked up my behind by God. He's going to kick me good. I need it. And you need it. I want somebody to motivate me. I want some church to motivate me. I want to do more. You, you can be comfortable if you want to. Brother, I want to get motivated. I want to get stirred up. I want God to do something. And he will. He always does. He always does. I mean, go somewhere I can get convicted. I can get preached to. I dish it out to you. I need somebody to dish it out to me. I love preaching. I love preaching. 
I love preaching. I love the Word of God. It helps me. Talk about the right type of preaching. The right type of teaching. The motive me to do more for God. Because I love the Lord. And I'm like the Apostle Paul. Paul the Apostle said, I have not arrived. And knowing the terror of the Lord, I persuade them. Somebody terrorized them. Somebody showed them. And opened up the word of God and motivated them. Gave them a kick in the behind. And if Paul's the chief of all sinners, where, where am I? Where's your pastor? Where is the sister pastor? Where are you? Brother Brother, you're right. Some of them are so stinking and prideful. When's the last time they used an altar? Seriously. When's the last time they humbled themselves? Seriously, when's the last time they used an altar? I'd have to come and say, God, what's wrong with my heart? I'd have to, I'd have to say, what is wrong with my heart, God? What's wrong with me? Seriously. When I go to a conference, Brother Burley, there's times I'll do it just to break the sticking pride in my heart. I'll be one of the first ones just come down the hill. Sometimes I'm like you. I'll look around. See if somebody's going to come first. <laughs> Somebody come first. <laughs> That's the way we are. We're so filled with stick and pride. And, and then we, we, got, we got some to come down like this. We got some to come down like this. This is where they go. Bow the knee. If you can. And if you, and if you can't bow the knee, at least get close as you can, sit in the pew. And hum, hum, bow your head. Something wrong. Something about the altar. Something about the sacrifice and laying your sacrifice at the altar. There's something about humbling yourself at the altar and say, oh God, oh God, I, I respond. Oh God, forgive me. Oh God, I'm sorry. Oh God, these are the vows. These are the decisions. Oh God, I repent. Oh God, I'm sorry. Oh my God, I come to offer you praise and thanksgiving at the altar. Bind the sacrifice on the altar. Tie the animal up. Just lay him on the altar. Don't hop back and get off the altar and, and say, I have not sacrificed. I, this is not a sacrifice. And do what you want to do. No, you're to be offered to God. You're to be offered to praise and a sweet smell to God. You must give your body as a living sacrifice. Oh, God, these are my, your hands. These are your feet. These are your eyes. Oh, God, make me a princess. Oh, God. God, make me like Boaz. Oh, God, help me to make the decisions like Ruth. Oh, God, help me. Amen. The church say amen. Some of those beautiful girls you ever seen, you see there at North Valley Baptist Church. Some of the most beautiful girls and handsome boys you ever seen in your life. And you see them right here at Grace Bible of Baptist Church. Some of the most beautiful girls you ever laid your eyes upon at the First Baptist Church in Hammond and at Hiles Anderson College. Amen. Some of the most handsome men that you ever meet. We got them right here. In Grace Bible Baptist Church. Right here. Amen. How could you be selfish? How could you be selfish? 
How could you be selfish? Stupid to tell a black girl that she can't have that white boy if God wants her to have her. That white boy can't have that black girl. That, or that black boy can't have that white girl. Can't have that Spanish girl. You, that's stupid. She's a prince. And he's a princess man. And they, they want to serve God together. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. They want to honor their parents. And they want to honor their man of God. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Amen. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 5. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers. Underline this. Whose damsel is this? Who, whose young lady is this? Who are you born to? A pretty girl. Who's, who's she belonged to? What do you belong to? Hey, look up here. Up here. That pretty girl. Yeah, who she belonged to? Who that young lady belonged to? I want you to know Ruth belonged to God. I want you to know she made that decision after she got saved to give her life to God. She made up her mind. I'll tell you what you need, young lady. Realize you belong to God. Your life belongs to God. You are right, Sister Pastor. We better be more loyal to Jesus than anybody. Anybody. Thank God for pastors going to the pastor's conference. Thank God for men of God. But they are men of clay. We'll honor them. we we'll thank God for them. But God is over. This book is over. And they, they get so disturbed. And that's one reason why he act like a stinking... I don't know what he act like. I don't know what. <laughs> there's so much. There's so much I said that day. There's so much I said that was truth that he just couldn't handle. I'm talking about the one to act like a racist. I mean that preacher. That that that, that, that man of God. I have no doubt God will deal with him. And my job is to is to, is to pray for him and love him and. My job is to keep my heart clean. Pray for him. But I think one of the things that disturbed them, and the message is still up there in the reaching all races, reaching all races, all, all the races, all the human races. Um, the message is up there. And I, you know how I do. Great men of God are not always wise. They're great men. They did great things. But they made stupid mistakes. They made stupid mistakes. It was not right for them not to baptize black people. It was, not for, it was not right for them to reject black people as members. Is that truth? Is that truth? Is that true? I don't care who they are. I don't care what doctor they are. Dr. John Rice, whoever it may be. Thank God for the good. Well, that preacher should realize the book is more important. And mistakes ought to be avoided. Amen. Amen. And to get upset and say, well, why did you bring up Moses married the Ethiopian woman? Because Moses married the Ethiopian woman. <laughs> Amen. And it's in the Bible. And the reason why I'm bringing this up with Ruth, it's in the Bible. Hello? The black man that helped Jeremiah is in the Bible. The black man that helped Jesus bury the cross 
is in the Bible. I said the black woman that helped most out with some of y'all shout, hey, black preacher, you can ignore black history. Get all scared, get all nervous what the white man's going to say. Hey, white preacher, you can get all nervous what the black man's going to say. I'm going to say, thank God for black people that serve God. Thank God for white people that serve God. Thank God for people that did great things. And thank God there's a black history month that's trying to help black people to get better and to do better and I happen to know nothing's going to help black people better than an independent fundamental back to soul winning church nothing's going to help preachers more to get rid of their stinking prejudice and why don't you come out to a conference in California why don't you show up once in a while why don't you come fellowship with some white preachers why don't you bring your assistant pastor and bring his wife and Bring some of your kids out with some of y'all shouting praise God. Let the church say amen. Instead of segregating yourself. Segregating yourself. Well, we're just going to have our black preachers meeting and black people going to gather together. We're going to settle. We're going to settle. This is the best way. We all feel more comfortable. Yeah, that's what the KKK loves and Hitler loves too. Putin too. You might as well join Putin the rest of them. <laughs> They're really mad at me. <laughs> Start acting all crazy like Putin. Don't be that way. Don't be that way. Amen. Know who you are. Know who I, know how good God's been to you. Amen. And you're very fortunate. <laughs> Elijah's going to graduate, Lord willing, this year. Elijah. God bless you, son. God bless you. Playing good basketball. Being the only black guy on the team. <clears throat> and many a times on the court. It's good training for you. It's good character build. Huh. It's good character build. To be able to have friends. To be able to laugh be able to have fun at the tournament there at Nashville. We had a wonderful time. Cheyenne! To cheer? <laughs> Cheyenne? Hey. Everything's okay. Everything's all right. You all right? You all okay out there? Everything's all right. Pastors on top side. We got a ways to go. But we come a long way. Got a ways to go, Sister Pastor. Thank you. There's not a race problem in your heart. I know you. Sister Patrice ain't no race problem. Ain't, ain't, ain't. No. That's when you start seeing your kids get all mixed up with the different, different ethnic group. <laughs> Especially when you're from Atlanta. <laughs> children start dating white. <laughs> I'm getting some of those white preachers mad at me right now, man. They're steaming the black preachers. Some of them. We're not into Louis Farrakhan mentality. We're not into KKK mentality. We ain't going back to the 50s. Call us troublemakers if you want to. We'll be troublemakers for Jesus. We'll rock the boat for Jesus. Some scared. Brother, if a pastor comes behind this pulpit, I ain't scared of him telling the truth. I ain't scared one bit. I just have to cheer him on. You rock the boat, rock it. Sometimes the boat needs a rocket. Amen. If we don't get some preacher start rocking that boat, our, our country is going to be turned to hell, man. 
because of junk like that, all the blacks untaught, all those blacks untaught, all the black populace, look with uh, Biden, look who he's electing, look who he's getting as a Supreme Court pit. Well, the devil's working his way up to this. And he made it, by the way, by the way, he already made up his mind, it's going to be a black colored woman. Not by what she, not, not, not by the character, but the color. He, his pick was based upon color. Get this, this is going to blow your mind. Supreme Court. I'm talking about after, after all the race problems we had our country. Hey, look at me! After all the discrimination, all that Martin Luther King push, made up his mind publicly for everybody. Discriminate in other people's color. We fought this stuff. We thought, don't you hire somebody because they're white? Don't you hire somebody because they're Spanish? Don't you hire somebody because they're black? You make sure they are able, they are knowledgeable, they are wise. We need people in this country that know how to lead, that know how to guide. Don't you, don't you pick somebody that's a vice president because of their color. You say, well, why, how do we get here? That white preacher, black preacher, that fooled around, ear tickling, not evangelizing, not teaching black people. Wish every black church I had opportunity to change that thing and to get in there. And to have what you have. In every white church. I wish they allowed me to just get in there. Change it. I'm talking about the ones that have that problem. I'm talking about the white ones that have black people all around. All around. All over. All over. And got one solid black family in their serving God. There's a black church. You got white people all over. Not a white one coming in. I like to give those young people the best. I like to give those girls a Boaz. And I like to give those boys a Ruth. Amen. I'm going to say this. We've got, we got to get some things done before you leave, okay? I'm going to pray in a moment. Pastor loves you. And all I'm trying to do is get you. I want you to have the best. I want you to have the best. It don't matter to you now. Some of you don't matter to you. You're, you're in a different world. You, you, you're acting like those people in Ukraine that said, ha, 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 ha. Ain't gonna get bombed. Ha, ha, ha. Putin ain't sending nobody in. <laughs> You're like that president just laughing. <laughs> he, he tried to tell him. Oh, they're, they're sleeping under. And we're, we're, we're with the subway. They're, they're sli they've been sleeping down there. Their, their apartment has been blown off. Their kids have been blown apart. There's a daddy that's weeping and taking his kid and putting him on the train that'll never see him again. Concern. We'll, we'll cry with you. We'll, 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 we'll feel for you after the devil's finished with you. <laughs> brother, brother. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. Pastor Barnett. <laughs> He's on the race thing again. <laughs> He's <laughs> black history. <laughs> black. <laughs> He's overreacted. Oh, the riots came, didn't they? What were they saying to me up in Baltimore? What were they saying to me to Ferguson? What were they what were they saying to me when they got rid of Trump, the, the conservative? And he, he you think Putin would have pulled that stick and stunting? Gas going up to about five five. California will probably see in about five dollars. Maybe six. Uh, he, he ain't laughing at me now. 
Some white preachers are thinking. That might be one of the reasons why I've had such a hard time booking meetings. <laughs> that, might, that might be one reason why I'm having a hard time booking meetings. I, I think some of them are seeing the need. I mean, where are the black, independent, fundamental, soul one that tell like it is? They, they may not like it. Some of them, they, they ain't crazy about all of it. But one thing they know, that preacher's trying to help people. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. Father, I love these people. God, you know I love them. I, I pray you help them. I want the best for them. I want the best. Uh, my sister pastor knows I want the best for his kids. He wants the best for my kids. Yes, we preach hard. We love them. Oh, God, we love them. Son-in-laws, daughters-in-laws, every one of them. Children, love them all. Heads about, eyes are closed, niece, nephews, grandkids. You ain't got to wait for anybody. Come. You ain't got to wait. Why wait? Why wait? Why let pride stop you? Ain't no sense of it. Come on. Come on. If you can't walk, crawl. Crawl. If you can't run, walk. My sister pastor standing and pleading. Pleading right now. Pleading. 